Hey guys, Jason Lawrence here. So I'm standing out in front of, uh, this is actually a customer build that we're doing, but this has been one of our staple model and spec homes throughout the past you know, 10 years or so. This has been a very common home. It's a home that we've built and we've been able to work off of and customize. It's one that we know that if we build it for a spec home, there's always a market for it. It's three bedrooms plus an office or a fourth bedroom. It's got a three car garage. It's got a rear covered porch, 10 foot ceilings throughout most of the house. I'll give you a little walk through. It's not finished yet. It's under construction. We're gonna be going into insulation here pretty soon, but this is a house that has really worked for us. If you find a house that works for you, you might as well keep using it. The benefit of building a spec home that you've built before is you know what the costs are. So it's real easy for you to identify a lot and say, okay, if I build this house, it's gonna cost me X amount of dollars on this lot. This is what other homes in the area are selling for. So I should be able to profit this much on it. Or if you build a house of this price point and you know what that final price is, it helps you determine, you know, if you're looking at a, at a, at a subdivision to build a lot in and you've got, you know, other homes of this price point in there, you know that this house, because you know what the pricing is, what that price point is, will work in the neighborhood. It kind of shortens up that, uh, that process for you. All right, so we've got our three car garage here. Coming in from the garage, we're gonna come into our mudroom area. So this is our mudroom. In this case, there's a, uh, a closet that's here. But a lot of times what we've done is we've had like a wood locker bench unit in here. And we've got a half bath, which is right here off of the mudroom. So now as we come past the mudroom area of the house, it brings us into the main area. You know, if you were coming in through the through the front door, you've got 10 foot ceilings here. We've got a office, or I'm sorry, a closet off of the, uh, the side of the foyer here. We've got the office off of the foyer, which could also be a fourth bedroom. In this case it is, there's a closet in here. Even if you're gonna use it as an office, it doesn't hurt to put the closet in there so you can market it as a four bedroom home. So I'm in the foyer, I'm looking at the great room. We've got a open stairwell. We'll have open railing and spindle here, arched opening. We've got stairs that go down into the, uh, the basement here. Hello. The great room's got 10 foot ceilings. Got a fireplace in the corner here. And then we've got a nice big picture window on the back there. So this, this home also has a, uh, a rear covered porch which you can see from here. And in this case, because we're on an exposure lot, it's not a rear covered porch, it's a rear covered deck. We've got our eating area here. That opening is going into the master bedroom area. Coming into the master bedroom, nice big window on the back of the master. Tray ceiling, double tray, so it goes from eight up to nine, up to 10. Walk-in closet with pocket door. Going into the master bathroom, there's gonna be a Kohler soak tub. Sits right in that, uh, that opening there. Double bowl vanity. And then the shower is going to be right in this area, tile shower. And then of course we do have a separate toilet room as well. Now, one thing I always talk about, and, and I guess I would recommend it because we do this, anywhere in the house that we're gonna have cabinets up against or countertops up against, we're using these engineered studs. That's these orange studs that you, that you see here. A typical t stud or two by four, or two by six, dimensional. It can twist, it can bow, it can belly out. The engineered studs don't move. So if you've got cabinets up against this wall, you're never in any danger of having your cabinet separate from the wall or having a stud push the cabinet and top away from the wall. 
in the great room here and I'm looking at the kitchen. There'll be a nice big island here. You can see the gas hookup where the stove's gonna be. Got a walk-in pantry. Over here, we've got our opening for the refrigerator, which a little tip if you can, recess that fridge opening if you've got a thick enough wall here. Cause then you don't have to get a counter depth fridge. You can still recess it into the wall so it's not sticking out too much. So in the eating area here, it is a split bedroom design, which means the masters behind me, main bedrooms are this way. So we've got a bedroom back here with a nice built out window. This is our bathroom here. Double bowl vanity in the main bath. Got our tub shower unit. So there is actually a door in between the vanity area for the bathroom and the tub shower toilet area, which is nice. You can have multiple people getting ready in here at the same time. So we use Sterling three piece tub shower units. This is, there, there's many to pick from. This is just one that we're using here. And then across from the tub shower is the toilet. Walking back out of the bathroom, and this is going to be our, our front bedroom. It's got a nine foot ceiling in here, transom windows. So again, we're standing in the great room here. I've got the office behind me, which is off of the, uh, the foyer. And then I've got two other bedrooms through this opening. And then we've got the master, which is gonna be over on this side of the house here. So from a numbers perspective, just to give you an idea, our build costs on this house is approximately $475,000. The house is 2,100 square feet. This is a customer build that had that half bath in there. The standard home doesn't. So 2,100 square feet, three bedrooms plus the flex room or four bedrooms, two full bathrooms. It's got the soap tub in the master, which by the way, isn't something that is needed nowadays. Our, our more recent specs that we do don't have soap tubs in them. Anyways, we've got the soap tub, towel shower in the master, covered porch on the rear of the home. Again, this is a customer build. This had the daylight exposure lot. So that $475,000 our cost is if it's being built on a flat lot. Because when you're building on an exposure lot, the deck, the exposure with dropping the siding, the additional windows down in the basement, that can add anywhere from twenty-five to $30,000. So this house, 2,100 square feet ranch being built on a flat lot is approximately $475,000 our cost. This particular lot that the home is being built on was $100,000. So we're into it, we would be into it, for $575,000. That means that we would want to be selling this house for somewhere right around $635,000. In that $475,000 build cost, that didn't account for holding costs, that didn't account for the realtor fees. So let's rewind a little bit and say, you know, instead of 635, we're probably going to want to make that 655. Now, you got to pay attention to the neighborhood that you're in. This particular neighborhood was established 20 years ago. And all of the homes that are built in here, aside from this one that's going up and the new lots that are in here, are not anywhere near $655,000. But there are other neighborhoods close by with homes that are in that price point. And that's just the market today. It's, you know, our build cost is what it is. It's $475,000. We've got to pay the price for the lot to get the lot. The lot's $100,000. There's nothing we can really do about that. So no matter what, we're into it for $575,000. So we need to be selling it for again you know in that that 655 range in order to account for you know realtor fees that are in there and holding costs when you're getting a spec loan you're paying a higher interest rate and you've got holding costs you might want to budget you know 10 to fifteen thousand dollars of you know interest payments holding costs 
throughout that spec home build. So that's something that you want to always have budgeted into your numbers. And then again, the realtor fees, if you're going to build this house, maybe you don't need a realtor to sell it. Maybe somebody's just going to come in and buy it. But if you're getting to a point where, okay, the house is done and nobody's bought it, it makes sense to list it on the MLS with the real estate agent. And you've obviously got to pay to do that. So you want to make sure that you're putting this house in the proper area. Now on the, on the flip side of that, there's people that are out there that, that are, you know, have money to, to build a new home. They're in that price point of a, um, of a market. So if you build something like this and our cost is what it is, it would cost them the same amount to build this home on their own lot. So we're just charging what it would normally cost to build this home anyways. So the cost is what it is. I know it seems kind of scary high. I mean, when I say selling this for 655, it, it is kind of crazy to think about, but that's just the reality of it. And that's where the price needs to be. And to date, there haven't been issues with, with selling the spec homes for the prices that they need to be sold for. So just something to think about to give you tra some transparency on what the numbers are on building a home like this. Now this is in Southeastern Wisconsin. This is May, I'm sorry, April of 2023. And we have to do full basements here. So if you're building in other parts of the country, there's obviously some cost savings if you're not doing a full basement. And you might want to get creative with things, you know, like in the garage here, for example, you know, a lot of times it's all the little things that add up into what the expense of a house is. So for example, in the garage here, we, we, so we include window jams on all of our windows and a window jam is, I'll show you here. Here's a window jam. And then these windows are double hung. That means that the top sash opens and the bottom sash opens. And now if we were doing this as a spec home, we wouldn't have black on the inside. That's an added cost that we just, <laughs> 655 is high enough. So, but back to the window jams. If we remove the window jams and if we make this window a single hung instead of a double hung, you're saving on the casing that goes around the window as well. So you'd be returning the drywall into the window. So you have no jams no casing, and then the window's a single hung instead of a double hung, that can save you a hundred plus dollars per window. So in the garage, in the garage, you really don't need to have double hung windows. You don't need to have the same, I mean, really in the garage here, these could have been just white interior windows. It's, it's the garage, you don't need the window jams, you don't need the double hung window. So that's just one little thing. If you can find a bunch of things like that to help save or shave, a few thousand dollars off of the house. That's just a few thousand dollars more in profit. All right, well, that's about all I've got for this video. I just wanted to share this house with you and kind of talk about this particular house since, since it's been a popular build for us. All right, that's all I got for this one. Take care and God bless.